Hey, hello everybody. We've been on the subject of creating a really winning plan for your business and we've gotten through this ideation phase we've talked about over the last week and your ideation is completed. Now, now that you, you're really excited about your business idea by uh, the work you've done so far, now we've got to create a plan, a real plan for what you hope to be a winning business. Let's talk about how to go about this. You went through the five questions at ideation and, and um, quite frankly, you established the premise of your business. There's a need that you really understand well and you've got a way to fulfill that need that's gonna be pretty compelling. That you've, uh, You've done over the top of the thumbs look at your market. You find it to be attractive. It's large. And there are a lot of people that you believe have this need. And then you've taken a good look at the competition, at least two or three of them. You do, did some secondary research to figure out that, by golly, if I do what I'm planning on doing, I should have a winner. I should have a real competitive advantage. And with that competitive advantage, I can sell a lot and I can make some money in so doing, a profit in other words. Or if I'm a nonprofit, I will have fulfilled the purpose of my, my business, the social cause that I told the IRS I would fulfill. So it is now very important for you to really know your market. You've done over the top of the thumb work. Now it's time to dig in. And there are various ways to dig in, but at the end of it all, you need to know pretty intimately what this market is all about, what drives it, what are the trends behind it, what are the regulatory demands that are going to be put upon it, if not already. You want to know face-to-face, -face, <laughs> meet the enemy, if you will, eye-to-eye, -eye. and they're not the enemy, of course, but you know what I mean. It's figuring out in much more direct ways and in much more uh, thorough ways that this market is for real and you could prove it. So we start with more in-depth secondary research. Secondary research is short of primary research, which is kind of talking directly with the, the customer in many different ways. We'll get to that in a minute. Secondary research is not over though. You, you have uh, a lot of opportunity by letting Google be your friend. And I keep saying that now and then. But, but I'm Google. Um, you look up research articles. You try to figure out the size of this market, what the demographics are of the, the people that have various needs in your market. You want to develop what are called these personas. It's a fancy term for know the characteristics of the people that have this need. Things like income level, geographic location, where they live, where they work, what, what industries they're in, what jobs they hold, and on and on, and, and many other characteristics. But you want to know the market demographics of the people that you're going to be selling to ultimately, because you're going to be talking to a few of them in just a second here. There, there could be consultant reports. Believe it or not, what I tell many people is, let the librarian at your local library be your friend. Go to the library, get your library card, of course, <laughs> but then ask the research librarian for information about this market that you're in. I'll tell you something. They do a lot of things in these libraries, but they love it when someone comes in that actually puts their librarian skills to work. Go do it. I think you'll be satisfied. But also university libraries, if you have association with universities, um, take advantage of their research libraries. Quite often, if there's a business school associated with your university, it'll be quite extensive. So you can get consultant reports without paying for them. They'll have all sorts of business magazines and periodicals that you could uh, read about. So you can find out about these kinds of things through your Google search. Again, let Google be your friend. So research what's available already on the internet and in your local library and get a reasonably complete picture of this market and all of the demographics that go into describing this opportunity 
and the people who have it. That's secondary research. Then there are various ways to get face to face with your customers. And probably the most popular way to do it is a market survey. A market survey is simply a form of interviewing representatives of the market that you're going to enter. You want to meet the customer. And you're going to have to be well prepared to do this. You're going to put together a questionnaire, a series of questions that help you understand the magnitude of this need that they have and what it takes to fulfill that need in their minds. This is your time to ask questions and shut up and listen to these people who actually could be the ones you're going to be selling to on down the road when you when you actually deliver your product and services. So a survey is a very structured series of questions that determine the need, what it takes to fulfill it, the size of the market, the needs in depth, their view of competitors, what they're, what they're willing to pay for it, in other words, price sensitivity, and the list goes on of very relevant things that you're gonna find out. The more people you talk to, and I'm talking about 25 to 50 interviews that you might have in a very structured way, use a market survey platform. There are plenty of them out there. Polefish, SurveyMonkey, and the list goes on. They're okay. Some of them actually help you put this thing together in the first place. If you're very, very unsure about how to do this, then there are plenty of marketing consultants that could help you do that and you would be the one conducting the survey though. So that's market surveys, do them. The next are in interviews. Now, of course, the market survey is an interview, uh, but you may, do, may, may have done the market survey through a, an email campaign as well, but a market survey where you're talking to people, I think is the best. But then interviews, but I'm thinking of interviews with other industry players other executives who have similar companies, even the competition. That may sound crazy, but you could probably find a way to do that. But you want to meet people that know this market, that have companies that have products and services into very segments of this market. You want to sit down and have coffee with or have a Zoom call with people who really know the market and from various angles. So whatever interviews you do, do them with thoughtful questions in mind, just the same way you did the market survey work so that you can gather outside, still outside in points of view, but they all add up to some conclusions you can make about what this market looks like by lots of different people viewing it from very different angles. The next and much more sophisticated are focus groups. This is the uh, put 12 people in a room close the door and watch them react to various kinds of questions that you pose to them. It's a very interesting form of, of market research. It's, it's something you probably are going to want to have a, a focus group company actually put on for you because it's a very well orchestrated, very well thought out process that they go through. You're best off by having experienced people do this for you. But focus groups, particularly for products, things that you buy, like B2C kind of businesses, are businesses that can really benefit from focus groups. So consider focus groups. B2B businesses, maybe not so much. It's a very effective way to learn a lot about your market by impartial people. So all said and done, you have determined after doing much more work that indeed you have an attractive market to go after. You know a lot about the people within it, you know about what other industry experts think about it. You've talked directly to dozens and dozens of customers that you may be selling to. You've got a sense for the trends that have driven the creation of this market in the first place. What regulatory or legislative actions could bear upon your market and the list goes on. You know the ins and outs. And when people talk to you, and after five to 10 minutes of hearing you talk about your business, they conclude that you are very in tune with what your market is all about, and you know it directly from the people that you're going to be selling to. You have done a great job. So do the work to really do a solid piece of market research. It's the first step for you to creating a plan for a winning business.
If you've got a market that you understand very well, it's going to serve as the foundation for every decision you're going to make with respect to your products and your services and, and how you're going to take all of this to market. Do a great job on your market research. Have a great day.